What is going on everyone? My name is Jared and I am from TechWorks and today we are revisiting the Asus Republic of Gamers Strix Edition gaming laptop. This is the 17 inch model and to be specific it is the GL703VM. So this is a model that was only sold on Newegg uh, that had these exact specs in the 17 inch model. Now they do have a couple of others now at this time which are the Hero Editions and the Scar Editions. Uh, this is neither of those. The Hero, I would consider more of the budget option, and the Scar Edition being more of the higher up tier series. So this isn't one of those laptops that is super thick. I mean, you look at that, it's, you know, it's maybe a, a little bit under an inch. You have plenty of I.O., and you also have the other side, which has your SD card reader, your USB 3, your USB-C, your Kingston lock, and all of that good stuff. Over here, you do have a mini display port, Ethernet, HDMI, another USB, or two USBs, your power, and your headphone jack. So pretty well set up for the I.O. category, and it's actually pretty easy to upgrade. Uh, this back panel right here, you pop this little rubber piece off, one screw, you pry this plastic out and it gives you access to your uh, M.2 drive as well as your normal SATA drive. So you can easily pop one of those out, upgrade it, uh, makes it real easy. You don't have to take this whole bottom case off, which a lot of times in laptops uh, makes it very hard to get back to the way it was because they only fit a certain way. So I've used this now for about six months and now I got some things to say about it. So, like I said, this isn't the thinnest. They have the Max-Q laptops, which are actually thinner. And they also have the thicker, more high-performance laptops, which obviously you're not buying for its slim and neat design. You're buying it power, right? You're buying because it has a full-size desktop graphics cards in it. You're buying it because it's basically a desktop replacement. So why would you get this one? So I would consider this pretty much mid-road. You're not going max Q to the point where you're sacrificing heat, you're sacrificing a lot of performance, yet you're not going huge to where you're not gonna break your back while you carry this with you in your backpack if you're in school or anything like that. It's pretty much pretty straightforward. So with this computer, it's not, I give it a solid middle of the road rating and let me tell you why. So I bought this primarily to do some on the go video editing because it does have a GTX 1060, an i7 processor and 16 gigabytes of RAM, which dollar for dollar is a lot less expensive than a MacBook Pro, which I was considering as well. The MacBook Pro was around 3000. This came in on Newegg for $1,200. 17 inch, bigger display, 1080p, which is more than fine and had the same RAM, had two hard drives, easy upgradability, all of that. A couple things I noticed right off the bat, this is a very stiff hinge when you bring it up and it provides a decent amount of flex, especially if you're carrying it from one side or the other. Now that's nothing really to worry about because generally most people are gonna carry it from the middle, but if you're a person who tends to lift on one side, having a stiff hinge with a larger screen like this it's gonna put a lot of stress on that one side. And as you can see, this whole back side is open, so you only have the two hinge points. Something's probably gonna happen after a while. Next thing I noticed, the trackpad, which is good. You don't have dedicated left and right mouse buttons, which is fine, but it, it's there's a lot of space here. It could have been made bigger, but the tracking is decent. The tracking is good, the click is good. Not very clicky, and if you click one side, you can't click the other, so say you're clicking and holding your SOL on the other side. The keyboard is backlit, but it is one of the normal, I guess you would say laptop keyboards, which has the little rubber buttons. It's nothing like a mechanical keyboard or anything like that. It's not a butterfly switch sort of thing like MacBooks. It's kind of just fine. And the typing is good. Typing is comes very natural, not big of a learning curve. You do have a number pad over here and you have more or less full size arrow directional keys for doing various things in games or just navigating around. 
Up here you do have your function keys and you do have certain buttons like F5 is a fan, uh, doubles as a fan, switch, brightness, extra monitor, turning off your trackpad if you're using a keyboard and mouse separately, sleep, airplane mode, things like that are getting much more normal. You also have a few dedicated buttons on the top, volume, microphone on and off, and this Asus Republic of Gamers button, which would bring you to your, uh, your special Asus program, which lets you allow for fan speed, for dedicating your performance or balanced battery life, and all of that. You have a nice little texture over here. It's not carbon fiber, it's not anything fancy like on the Scar laptops, but it does travel all the way up in here. And you do have some vents on the top for air circulation. So when you look on the back, I like how the screen does work and how you get this cut out here, right? Because then you do have your status lights all visible all the time. And then on the back, you have your exhaust. And down here, you also have some airflow too. You do have down firing speakers. So these speakers don't get very loud most of the time. They're actually pretty weak in comparison to a lot of other laptop speakers. Uh, directly speaking, like the new MacBook Pros, upward facing get pretty loud these do not something kind of cool if you can see in there inside your air exhaust you got some red coloring just a nice little accent and then like I said on the bottom you do have your quick access to your RAM and hard drives right here which again is very nice rather than taking off this whole bottom spot getting these clamshells open and closed and getting them right back to where they are sometimes are quite the pain in the butt I said IO is pretty sufficient and the screen everything about it is pretty much just okay it's not gonna be your best performer it's not gonna have your best battery life and there's a few things that it did compromise on for being this $1,200 price tag it's not the $3,000 desktop replacement uh, like some of the Asus Predators or even some of the other Asus laptops and it isn't the thinnest one Asus makes either. But as you can see, it boots up really fast. This laptop was completely smoked as far as being dead. Um, let me just, uh, doesn't even matter, I don't care. Um, it does boot up nice and fast. The screen, whether you can see it or not on camera, it's good color, it is 1080p. And I've had a lot of questions about this laptop uh, over my video lifespan since I published the first one. A couple of the questions were, how heavy is it? So this laptop weighs about five pounds, I would say, maybe a little more. It is 17 inches diagonally, not, definitely not bezel-less. You have a nice thick bezel on the bottom, all around the top, have a webcam. Does do a nice job, has little spacers here so you don't get keyboard grime on your screen. It is a matte finish on the screen, so you reduce this glare pretty well, and it's not gonna be awful to look at when you're in the sun. You can't see it right now, but the keyboard does have, I believe, five zones of RGB lighting that you can customize in the Asus app. Like I said, you press your uh, Asus Gaming Center button, and it brings up all your information that you have. So, as you can see, we have the Intel i7 7700HQ CPU, which is their laptop grade version. The NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1060 with six gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM. The one hard drive is a one terabyte drive and the other is your boot drive. And you have 16 gigabytes of RAM, right? Which is one stick, which allows you to put in another 16 gig stick and get 32 gigabytes of RAM very easily. Down at the bottom, got a whole lot of uh, different options. Fan over boost, you have the game visual. So changes your color of the screen. So I usually leave it at the sRGB, which is usually the best color accuracy. You have your GPU performance limiter. Whoop, clicked off of that way too fast. You have your exploit game caster shortcut. Sonic Radar, which is another one of the Asus proprietary programs, GeForce Experience, and your Aura. So one of the downsides of this laptop specifically is yes, it does have USB-C, which is on the that side, the right side, but what you don't have is Thunderbolt 3. And what does that do? 
Well, Thunderbolt 3 is just the newest form of USB-C, which allows high-speed data transfer. And what that also does is allows you to have uh, external GPU support. So what does that mean? So back in the day, there's only a couple computer brands that did this, Razer and Alienware, which had a external dock that you'd set to the side of your laptop, plug in separately, and put a full desktop size graphics card in it, and then hook that to your laptop. And basically, your laptop would utilize that desktop grade graphics card for graphics. And more or less, it would either extend your lifespan of your laptop, or make it so when you got home and you plugged it into your dock, it would uh, boost it up a bit. Now, you didn't get full desktop grade performance, but it was better than the laptop grade counterpart. Now, there's a whole bunch of different docks out there. I know Gigabyte makes one. Um, I'm sure there's tons if you just searched online, right? But that means that this laptop cannot be used to extend its life because it doesn't have Thunderbolt 3. And obviously, GPUs and laptops are not upgradable. Things like the Razer Blade Stealth, uh, other laptops, pretty much anything now with USB C and Thunderbolt 3 can utilize an external dock, even including the new MacBooks. So it's kind of nice to see that happening across the board. It means you can kind of not have to spend an arm and a leg when buying a laptop to then get desktop grade performance. If you happen to know somebody that has, you know, a uh, desktop GPU or you yourself have one and you're rebuilding your big computer or getting rid of your big computer, uh, you can still find new life for it for not a whole lot of money. So one of the things you may notice, the GPU temperature gets pretty hot. And actually right now I can even hear the fan on. And this is on auto. I can do run it in overboost, which will just make it run crazy fast all the time or auto. I'll leave it in auto, but basically what that happens is more or less, if it gets too hot, you're gonna see thermal throttling happen. And what that does is it's gonna reduce your performance when your CPU gets too hot and it's gonna wait until it gets cooled down to go back to its normal speed, so on and so forth. So this is normally clocked at 2.8 gigahertz. It does have the overclocking enabled by default by Intel and it's getting up to 57 degrees Celsius to 62, which honestly under no load is kind of warm. But that happens when you have a thin and light laptop because there's not a lot of room for heat sinks and big fans, you're basically utilizing a lot of heat sink area and hoping that the little fans just keep up with it. But most of the time, you're gonna end up having some sort of thermal throttling or it's just gonna clock itself down to accommodate for being hot for longer. However, the GPU right now is in a great, great temperature compared to uh, maybe something in a desktop which may get a little hotter. Anyway, in this area, it gives you a whole lot of information about what the laptop is doing. Uh, so again, not having USB-C with Thunderbolt 3, to me is a downside because basically once games get past the GTX 1060 uh, realm of compatibility, um, this laptop, you're gonna be SOL and you're gonna lose its usefulness unless you're playing older games. For someone who's gonna keep this for you know, an extended amount of time, five, six years, you might find yourself in two, three years uh, not being able to play in medium high, you might have to go to medium low to the point where you probably just end up in low because these graphics cards are getting much better, much faster all the time to the point where laptops not much bigger have full size desktop grade graphics cards, which this one actually is desktop grade, but it's just smashed into such a small package that it just gets warm and there's nothing you can really do about it. Like I said, you do have some intake up here, you have the exhaust out the back, and you have downward facing speakers which don't get very loud. Other than that, I don't have too much complaints about the laptop. Like I said, you do have decent clicks. Uh, sometimes it is hard to use both. Uh, the keyboard types pretty fine, nope, yelling at me. And obviously you do have all your buttons up here which can turn on your microphone on and off, which might be helpful if you're gonna be streaming on the go, recording voiceovers for videos, what say you there. Uh, really, there's not a whole lot else to say about this laptop. You know, this was $1,200 on sale from Newegg, 17 inches. It does get kind of warm, and I know some people were asking about taking this on trips and things, and say you were on a bus, and how big is this laptop? So, 
For perspective, let me uh, dig out an iPad, a 12 inch, a 12.9 inch iPad right here. So I lay that down. Whoop. You got about another three inches in length and eh, about a half inch, I would call it width, height, whatever you want to call it, uh, where it's comparable. So you're probably looking at, obviously it's going to be 17 inches diagonally. You're probably looking at about 15 inches by about a foot, by about 12 inches this way to this way. So this certainly isn't going to be put it under your arm laptop territory. This is going to be, you're going to need a big sleeve, maybe something like this. And then hopefully your backpack is big enough. Now, obviously if you buy a gaming laptop backpack, you're in business. Um, if not, it may be a little bit of an albatross to bring with you just because it is five pounds and it is pretty big. Another thing to mention, make sure you have your power cord always handy. So with anything gaming, uh, your battery life is going to suffer. Anytime you're running it at max settings, your battery is going to suffer. And with a laptop, obviously you're limited by the battery capacity. You can put a much bigger battery in a laptop that is much bigger. But again, if you're going for thin and light, that's definitely not going to be the spot. So I'm going to say on average, I only get a few hours, if that, with this laptop. And now that is with just either surfing around on the internet and especially if you actually do any sort of creative work or anything that's going to be graphics card heavy, even gaming, basically just plug it in from the start because you're going to suffer performance wise and you're going to be in, involved in a game. And but as soon as you know it, it's going to kind of crap out on you. So certainly keep your power cord heavy, but that isn't something that is just distinct to this laptop. Any gaming laptop, an Alienware that I had was the same way. I mean, it was a little better because it had a much bigger battery. It also was like an inch and a half thick, but um, it's certainly not gonna be great. And that's just inherently of all these. A lot of these laptops that you get crazy expensive ones have two power cords just because they want it to be even more crazy. It needs more power. It's just power hungry. But going back to things I like about this laptop. So this thing isn't too obtrusive when you're talking about design wise, right? So nice, sleek, sort of matte black brushed finish. Just the, the Asus um, Republic of Gamers logo here, which does light up red when the lid is open. And other than that, I would definitely be okay with this bringing it to work, right? So if you're in a professional setting, you have enough money to buy one laptop, you kind of want it to pull double duty with gaming and professional, this certainly is in the possibility because it doesn't come out and scream gaming as if you had an Alienware or maybe an MSI that is really um, gamer aesthetic, right? RGB everywhere. Alienwares have lights on the corners in their V design going, uh, was it this way? Um, there's RGB everywhere and that's inherently gamer. This just has this that lights up red. I would say something like this or something like the Razer, uh, any of the Razer laptops would be something I would easily bring to a workplace setting and not feel weird that my laptop is all the bells and whistles yelling at it at everyone else in the meeting. So there is that. I myself appreciate how much IO there is, especially in an age where laptops are reducing and reducing ports. Like again, example, MacBook, you get four Thunderbolt three ports, USB-C ports, and uh, that's all you get. So this still gives you a full functioning set for anything that you have, whether you have mini display port to extend a screen, this will drive a 1080p monitor, no problem. Uh, if you do want to plug it in at home to something bigger, you do have your wired ethernet. If Again, if you're going to play games that you need low latency, uh, playing PUBG, Fortnite, whatever, that you don't want network lag, you have the wired connection. You have enough USB ports to plug in a keyboard, a mouse, Anything that you're going to need, webcam, if you want a better webcam, if you're going to stream with it. You have the availability to add more RAM, get up to 32 gigs of RAM. You probably could even do 64. I don't know the exact spec on that. But uh, overall, for a $1,200 laptop, it does a lot of things right. It checks a lot of the boxes. I do wish the USB-C was Thunderbolt 3 so that I could extend the life of this laptop. But that is not saying that this is awful by any means. Uh, it is just 
Again, when you buy something with a budget in mind, there will be compromises. I know they have laptops this same size that have the 1070. And I know the SCAR version is certainly a little more upgraded. You have a better monitor, uh, more refresh rate. You have 120 hertz refresh rate. Uh, anything else to note about this computer? You have a little bit of laptop flex right in the middle. Again, that's pretty inherent of these sort of things. It's not super solid, but again, you're right in the middle, um, pressing down on the keys. You're not, it's not like this is gonna bother you in your day to day. You have very little flex near your trackpad. You do over here, which is probably right around where the battery is located. Actually, no, you flip it over, hard drive's over here. Yeah, your battery's probably up in this area somewhere. Again, this is plastic. Plastic top case, you get a little bit of the, I guess, brushed metal, aluminum, whatever it is on the lid here. You know, it's done well for me. I've used Adobe Premiere on it, Adobe Photoshop opens up real nice. This thing boots incredibly fast with the M.2 drive. I'd even say faster than my desktop, uh, which is way more expensive than this guy. Uh, if you're gonna spend $1,200 on a laptop, I would certainly consider this. Think about what you're gonna do. I would, I would almost also consider spending a few more dollars and getting the SCAR version just because it is a little better screen, uh, a little bit different build quality, which might be nice. And everything else is more or less the same. Those do come in 15 inch models and some of them do come in 17 inch models like this. So overall, I would definitely give it a go. Um, if you're looking for something that's not gonna break the bank, that's gonna get you through work, it's gonna get you through playing some games, it's gonna last you a good amount of time. Definitely something to keep your eye on if it goes on sale. Again, this was Newegg exclusive, so obviously that'll be the spot to buy it. They do have a lot of laptops in this category, the 1,000 to 1,500 from MSI, from Asus, from Acer, you know, you name it, they're doing it. A lot of more manufacturers are getting into this entry level gaming space. I know Samsung's releasing one. HP is trying to do better with their Omen line and Lenovo is trying to do better with their Legion line of laptops. So as long as it's got the specs you want, you know, realize that going into it, what you want to do with it, what you want to play. If you're looking to play 4K ultra high def all the time, no, obviously this isn't going to do it, especially with a 1080p screen. You got to get into the Alienware with a QHD screen. You got to get into the Razer with you know, the 1080 because this is just not going to do it. Please remember to stay close to your power because this thing isn't going to last very long, especially during intense gaming sessions. Definitely going to want to plug it in. Obviously, if you're going to game, um, at the very least, invest in a mouse. The keyboard will be fine for you. The WASD keys are lit up and a little bit different in color, so you can find them in a dark room. You can light them up individually, again, with your program. It's not overly gamery. You got your Republic of Gamers. You can take all these off if you wanted to. It's a solid laptop. You're not going to go wrong with it, especially if this is something you like. You want to use it for a bit, you'll be good to go. Word to the wise, you know, lift it from the middle. You don't want to see your screen get all messed up because... I can imagine when you get into high performance laptops, there's a lot of stuff crammed in a lot of small spaces. Repairability might not be on top of their list. Anyway, my name is Jared and I am from TechWorks. I'm gonna be hitting up more PC stuff in the recent days. I got a very special project coming up, which I am very, very excited about. Uh, a project of my own. We're gonna make something really special. So uh, stay tuned for that. It'll be a longer video. And it'll probably be time lapsed because God knows how long it'll take. Anyway, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. If you do like what I do, stay tuned for more content. Drop a subscription. Um, drop a sub. And um, we'll see you in more videos. Take it easy.